Football Friday, the 95th Battle of the Piney Woods is one for the ages. Plus, we take a look at the week ahead. Abilene Christian head coach Adam Doral joins us one-on-one. -on -one. And ACU players play Would You Rather. I was wondering what this was. That's all ahead on Whack Football Friday. <laughs> Welcome to Black Football Friday. I'm Eric Danner. The Battle of the Piney Woods 95th edition proved to be one of the most memorable in the storied series of the game. At NRG Stadium in Houston, home of the Texans, Stephen F. Austin jumping out over Sam Houston, Trey Self to Xavier Gibson, the Lumberjacks would take a 13-0 lead. And just before the half, Keegan Shoemaker subbing for an injured Eric Schmidt finds Jaquez Ezard SFA up 13-6 at the break. Third quarter, Self to Lawton Reichel makes it 20 to 6. The Lumberjacks faithful looking to end a nine game losing streak in the Battle of the Piney Woods. Fourth quarter, fourth and eight. Shoemaker to Ife Adei for the shoestring catch. They review it. It's a touchdown. Bearcats still alive, down 20 to 14. Next possession. Self gets sacked by Jahari K. He fumbles. Jacks recover. K is named Ticket Smarter Defensive Player of the Week. Bearcats get the ball back. After a face mask call and another fourth down play, freshman Trapper Pinnell goes up the gut for the score. We're tied at 20. With kicker Seth Morgan out, backup freshman Christian Pavone converts the extra point. SHSU up 21 to 20. Last chance for SFA, Chris Campos going for a 51 yard field goal, but it goes wide right. Number one ranked Sam Houston survives and wins the Battle of the Piney Woods. It was a great win and what a great atmosphere. Uh, thank the Texans for everything they do. It's like a bowl game for our kids. It really is. It's like a bowl game. Uh, for recruiting, it's amazing. Uh, for uh, the WAC, you know, we had representation from the WAC here, and their, their eyes were like, wow. Yeah, it's like, yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, one of the great football traditions in America, this game between us and, and Stephen F. Austin. Coming up this week, Sam Houston hosting Lamar in a WAC slash AQ7 matchup. That is a 2 p.m. Central Time kickoff. Stephen F. Austin traveling to Jacksonville State. You might remember the Gamecocks upset Florida State earlier this season. That is at 3 Central. Both games are on ESPN+. Plus. After falling at number 3 ranked South Dakota State, Dixie State plays another top team as the Trailblazers travel to Missoula to take on number 6 ranked Montana. That is a 1 p.m. Mountain Time kickoff on ESPN+. Plus. Tarleton making the trip to Richmond, Kentucky to face Eastern Kentucky. And we get another great highlight from Tariq Bits, and he had three catches for 66 yards. But the Texans' offense held to just three points by the Colonels' defense. EKU winning 20 to three. Tarleton is on a bye this week. Meanwhile, Eastern Kentucky will host Black opponent Abilene Christian, who will be making the trip to the Bluegrass State. That will be a 6 p.m. Eastern Time kick on ESPN Plus. The Wildcats hosted Central Arkansas this past week, and things looked good for ACU early. Stone Earl tossing two touchdown passes to make it 14-0, but the Bears come storming back, winning 42-21. Coming up next on WAC Football Friday, we talk with Abilene Christian head coach Adam Doral. He tells us what the state of the ACU football team is at the midway point of the season. We'll be right back. <laughs> The WAC, we value sportsmanship on the field and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents, the officials, the fans, and our team. Great sportsmanship is about taking ownership after a loss and being humble after a win. We want you to team up with us by staying positive on the sidelines. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are, are the Western Athletic Conference. Welcome back to Black Football Friday. We're now joined by the head coach of Abilene Christian, Adam Doral. Coach Doral, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Coach, I appreciate you doing this. A little technical issues here in the, uh, in the office. So we're doing this uh, via phone, which is pretty amazing, I guess, when you think of it, that we can still do this. But uh, again, appreciate you hanging with us here. Uh, coach, season, we're, we're almost at the midway point here. You guys are three and two. Can you kind of give me an assessment of your team so far this year? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, we, we really like our team. Um, you know, I've been very proud of them. I think it's a, it's a group of guys that work really hard each and every day. We've had 
uh, what I would term very few um, bad days or mediocre days. And, you know, I think that's a sign of good internal leadership on our football program. I think we're uh, fairly tough. I think we're a very blue collar football team. Um, you know, I think we're very selfless right now. You know, we got a lot of guys playing at a lot of different positions. Um, you know, we're playing two quarterbacks and, and, you know, as you know, if you're going to do that, you got to have guys that are really bought into what you're doing and, and really believe in the big picture and, and, and see it as a, Hey, I'm going to do whatever I can to, to help us win football games. So from that aspect, man, it, it just feels really good. It's a good group to coach. We're really enjoying going to practice every day and, our coaching staff's the same way. And it's just a really good group to be around, a lot of positive energy. So we're having a ball, uh, to be real honest with you. Um, you know, I think some of the things we're doing good, I think we're running the football really well right now in, in a lot of different ways. Um, I think we've got a young freshman quarterback that's, you know, getting better uh, each and every week and, and continues to grow. And, you know, uh, got a junior behind him that's coming in and contributing as well right now. And the offensive line, I think, is probably – well, not probably it is. We've seen our most growth uh, in our entire football team on the offensive line. So I've been very proud of what those guys are doing. And it's showing statistically with us being able to run the football, uh, not giving up a lot of sacks and then receiving courts by committee and then defense. It's, you know, they've had a couple of tough games, but overall they've gotten some turnovers. And, and again, um, they're doing a good job of being uh, versatile and, and, doing an even package, odd package. So overall, it's been just uh, got a lot of, lot of work ahead of us, but it, it's also a lot of fun work ahead of us too. Coach, uh, you mentioned the freshman quarterback, Stone Earl, who makes the all whack uh, name team if, uh, if he doesn't make some other postseason awards here. Uh, as a freshman, he leads the whack in passing touchdowns with 13. You mentioned you have the junior behind him as well, but what have you seen from Stone that uh, is not only good for this year, but maybe for the next four years? You know, it's just his composure uh, for, for a young man. Um, obviously, he was raised by very good parents. Uh, his, his father um, had a pretty storied history in, in, the, in the game of football, and obviously I think that's helped him in his growth. The thing that I just appreciate about Stone, he never gets too high, he never gets too low, just his consistency every day. Um, you know, and to be voted, I mean, you know, f football, anybody that knows anything about football, to be voted as a captain, as a freshman, that's pretty remarkable. And, and that says a lot. And how we do voting, it's internally, it's by team. It's not just offense, defense. It's the entire team. So just leadership, uh, athletic. He's got great arm talent. He can throw from some different platforms and, you know, just continue to help him uh, through, through what we're trying to do, put good pieces around him. He's really good at giving us feedback on things that he doesn't understand or things that he doesn't particularly like that week. And, hey, we just don't, we don't run it. And, and so it's just real good communication. I think overall, just the consistency. It always helps as a quarterback when you have some good receivers to throw to. Kobe Clark, who had an opportunity to meet at the WAC football preview uh, back in July, he leads the WAC in touchdown reception. So it always helps to have some of those veteran receivers maybe when you have a freshman quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and Kobe's the, the catalyst over there. And, um, and I'm sure you know, but we're, we're getting those receivers, the balls in a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, some some intermediate games, some three step, a lot of jet sweeps, a lot of screens, uh, reverses. So it, we're, we're trying to be really creative to get those guys because Kobe's doing some great things. Darius Lewis. Uh, I mean, it's just it's a group by committee right now. And the, the other thing they're doing really well is they're blocking really good on the perimeter, which we're really proud of them for that. Coach, as I mentioned, your guys are three and two right now. Uh, this past week, you played Central Arkansas, started off great 21 to seven wind up falling 42 to 21 have you been able to digest that or is it one of those kind of things where you kind of move on to the next game oh no I, no we, we we spent you know we have a 24-hour rule win or lose but absolutely that's the first thing I talked to him about after the game um, it, this might sound crazy we had a group of guys that want to do so well that care so much that they were literally trying to do too much especially on defense you know we've got a mantra 111 to do your job and we don't feel like we were doing that on defense. Uh, we got into a frenzy with their tempo, didn't handle the, their tempo well, didn't ha handle their empty package well. Uh, you know, so those are things you've got to learn from. You've got to grow from it because, as you know, once you put something on film, you're going to see it again. And, you know, we'll probably see it again this week. So uh, we've got to be prepared for that. And then the flip side of it is offensively, you know, we turned the ball over three times. You can't do that. And all three of them 
were on third downs. Uh, two of them were on third and shorts we, where we actually converted the, the third down and ended up coughing it up. So uh, I got a lot of respect for Central Arkansas. I think, Nathan, I think they do a great job. Their kids are tough. They're storied. They're bought in. You know, their backs were against the wall a little bit. We knew we were going to be in for a, a big fight from them. And, and, and unfortunately, we just didn't handle that second half well. This week, you're at Eastern Kentucky. So uh, first really long road trip for the Wildcats this year. Uh, the Colonels beat Tarleton last week, 20-3. to 3. Have you been able to look at that game film? What do you see from EKU? Yeah, they're, they're a very good football program. I know in their short time there as a staff. Uh, I think the thing that stands out to me, start on the defensive side of the football, um, athletic group. You know, they're basic, basing out of an odd front, put a lot of linebacker-type bodies on the field, run around. Uh, they've got nine interceptions on the year, three defensive touchdowns, and they've also forced seven fumbles. So to me, you know, they're doing a lot of good stuff on offense and special teams, but it really starts with their defense. Uh, one of the best red zone defenses in the country right now, very stingy in the red zone, and then go to the offensive side. Uh, you know, they're being very balanced. RPOs running the ball, and they've got a really good quarterback, man. If he, if he gets out the door on you, he's gone. Um, and then special teams, I just think they're very sound. So it's going to be a very tough game. We've got to play very clean. And, you know, again, that's a, it's a good opportunity for us, good measuring stick. Uh, it's a chance for us to go somewhere we've never been. And our, our guys are really excited about flying up there and playing them. And um, we're looking forward to the challenge. Well, Coach, I want to thank you for, for taking some time out, again, hanging with us with our, our technical issues. And good luck this week at Eastern Kentucky. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Chad Abilene Christian. We'll be right back on Whack Football Friday. Black Football Friday. It's now time for ACU football players to play Would You Rather. Would you rather give up social media or eat the same dinner for the rest of your life? This is easy, bro. No way. I would rather give up social media. Okay, I was about to say. Oh my god. I don't know how easy that would be. Would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized horses or one duck size of a horse? One, why would I want to fight a hundred? I feel like they got the numbers there. Would you rather bear crawl a hundred yards or run a mile? Run a mile. For sure. For sure. You know, with the quick not doing bear crawls. Would you rather get stuck on a ski lift or an elevator? Ooh. I don't know. On a ski lift you can see everything, but on an elevator you're kinda of closed in, so if you fall, I mean, it is what it is. Yes. <laughs> Would you rather swim with sharks or go skydiving? I'm swimming with the sharks. For sure. <laughs> what if, okay, look, you can survive a shark attack, but can you survive falling out of a plane with no parachute? <laughs> well, you're not, you're what not. if your parachute doesn't work? Like, <laughs> what if the sharks eat you? I mean, but I mean, sharks don't like humans. Like the taste of humans. Okay. That does it for this episode of Whack Football Friday. Make sure to check out all the games on Saturday. Then check back here next, Whack Football Friday. <laughs>